Food provides an organism with nutrients, the matter it needs to survive. Many of these critical nutrients come in the form of biological macromolecules or large molecules necessary for These macromolecules are built from different combinations of smaller organic molecules. What specific type of biological macromolecules do living things require? Or are these molecules formed? What functions do they serve in? In this chapter, we will explore these questions. At its most fundamental level, life is made up of matter occupies space and has mass. All matter is composed of elements, substances that cannot be broken down. Each element is made up of atoms, each with a constant number of protons and unique properties. A total of 118 elements have been defined However, only 92 occur naturally, and fewer than that, 30 are found in living cells. C, H, N, O, P, S. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen in abundance, while phosphorus and sulfur in less quantity as seen from the percentage shown in this PowerPoint. All atoms com contain protons, electrons, and neutrons as seen in this figure. The only exception is hydrogen, which is made of one proton and one electron. A proton is a positively charged particle that resides in the nucleus, the core of an atom, and has a mass of one and a charge of positive one. An electron is a negatively charged particle that travels in the space around the nucleus. In other words, it resides outside of the nucleus. It has a negligible mass and a charge of negative one. Neutrons, like protons, reside in the nucleus of an atom. They have a mass of one and no charge. The positive protons and negative electrons charges balance each other in a neutral atom, which then has a net zero charge. Atomic number of an element is equal to the number of protons that element contains. The mass number of atomic mass is the number of protons plus a number of neutrons of that element. If you look at the two symbols shown here, Notice the numbers in superscript and subscript. Therefore, it is possible to determine the number of neutrons by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. Round up 22.99. Can you determine number of neutrons? 23 minus 11, that is equal to 12. Isotopes are different forms of the same element that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. As a living organism develops, the relative level of carbon-14 in its body is equal to the concentration of carbon-14 in the atmosphere. When an organism dies, it is no longer ingesting carbon-14, so the ratio will decline. Carbon-14 decays to nitrogen-14 by a process called beta decay. It gives off energy in this slow process. The process is called as carbon dating, and you can read more about it in this chapter. Some isotopes are unstable and will lose protons. Other subatomic particles or energy to form more stable elements. These are called radioactive isotopes or radioisotopes. They are used as tracer. Molecules with a detectable substance attached, we see them used in the PET scans.
patient is undergoing a PET scan after having been injected with a positron emitting isotope. You can also watch this animation in your course layout. Greater stabilities, atom will tend to completely fill their outer shells and will bond with other elements to accomplish this goal by sharing electrons, accepting electrons from another atom or donating electrons to another atom. Here you see an example of sodium element left hand side on the image. Sodium has atomic number 11 and you can see the first shell has two electrons, the second shell has eight electrons and the third shell has one electron. Atom on the right hand side is chlorine atom shell has two electrons, the second shell has eight electron and the third shell has seven electron. Sodium is able to donate the one electron to chlorine which can accept this electron and now has eight electrons in the third shell. Because the outermost shells of elements with atomic numbers up to calcium with atomic number 20 can hold eight electrons, this is referred to as the octet rule. An element can donate, accept, or share electrons with other elements to fill its outer shell and satisfy the octet rule. Atom does not contain equal numbers of protons and electrons. It is called an ion. Because the number of electron does not equal to the number of proton, each ion has a net charge. Positive ions are formed by losing electrons and are called cations. Negative ions are formed by gaining electrons and are called anions. Sodium loses its one electron and becomes a positive charged ion. The chlorine atom gains the one electron and becomes negative charge ion. How elements interact with one another depends on how their electrons are arranged and how many openings for electrons exist at the outermost region where electrons are present in an atom. There are four types of interactions, ionic, covalent, hydrogen bonds, and van der Waals interactions. As we saw in the example earlier with sodium and chlorine, because positive and negative charges attract, these ions stay together to form an ionic bond or a bond between ions. These bonds form when an electron is shared between two elements and are the strongest and the most common form of chemical bond in living organisms. Covalent bonds form between the elements that make up the biological molecules in our lives. These are, there are two types of covalent bond, polar and nonpolar. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms combine to form water molecules and bound together by covalent bond. The electrons from the hydrogen atom divides its time between the outer shell of the hydrogen atom and the incomplete outer shell of the oxygen atoms to completely fill the outer shell of an oxygen atom. Two electrons from the two hydrogen atoms are needed, hence the subscript 2 in H2O. The electrons are shared between the atoms, dividing their time between them to fill the outer shells of each. This sharing is a lower energy state for all the atoms involved than if they were existing without their outer shells filled. In a polar covalent bond, the electrons shared by the, by the atoms spend more time closer to one nucleus than to the other nucleus. Because of the unique distribution of electrons between a different nuclei, a slightly positive or a slight negative charge develops. The covalent bonds between hydrogen and oxygen atoms in water 
are polar covalent bonds. The shared electrons spend more time near the nucleus of the oxygen, giving it a small negative charge. Then they spend near the hydrogen nuclei, giving these molecules a small positive charge. Non-polar covalent bonds form between two atoms of the same elements or between elements that share the electrons equally. For example, an oxygen atom can bond with another oxygen atom to fill their outer shells. And polar covalent bonds form containing a hydrogen atom's form. The hydrogen atom in that bond has a slightly positive charge. This is because the shared electron is pulled more strongly towards the electron element and away from the hydrogen nucleus. Because the hydrogen atom is slightly positive, it will be attracted to neighboring negative partial charges. When this happens, a weak interaction occurs between the positively charged partial of the hydrogen atom of one molecule and the partial negative charge of the other molecule. This interaction is called a hydrogen bond. This type of bond is common. For example, the liquid nature of water is caused by the hydrogen bond between water molecules. Hydrogen bonds, van der Waal interactions are weak interactions between molecules. They occur between polar covalently bond atoms in different molecules. Some of these weak interactions are caused by temporarily partial charges formed when electrons move around a nucleus. These weak interactions between molecules are important in biological systems. Hydrogen bonds give water the unique property that sustain life. If it were not for hydrogen bonds, water would be a gas rather than a liquid at room temperature. As this macroscopic image of the oil and water show, oil is a polar compound and hence will not dissolve in water. Oil and water do not mix. When a substance readily forms hydrogen bonds with water, it can dissolve in water and is referred to as a hydrophobic, water-loving. Bonds are not readily formed with non-polar substances like fats and oil. These non-polar substances are hydrophobic, water-fearing, and it will not dissolve in water. The hydrogen bonds in water allow it to absorb and release heat energy more slowly than many other substances. The weight of a needle on top of a water pulls the surface tension downwards. At the same time, the surface tension of the water is pulling it out. Suspending the needle on the surface and keeping it from sinking. Notice the indentation in the water around the nucleus. Because water is polar with slightly positive and negative charges, ionic compounds and polar molecules can readily dissolve in it. Water is therefore what is referred to as a solvent a universal solvent, a substance capable of dissolving another substance. Have you ever filled up a glass of water to the very top and then slowly added a few more drops before it overflows? The water actually forms a dome-like shape above the rim of the glass. This water can stay above the glass because of the property of cohesion. These cohesive forces are also referred related to the water's property of adhesion or the attraction between water molecules and other molecules. This is observed when water climbs up a straw placed in a glass of water. Um, you will notice that the water appears to be higher on the sides of the straw than in the middle. This is because the water molecules are attracted to the straw and therefore adhere to it. Here you can see the example of the tree. Water is absorbed by the roots due to cohesion and travels up the leaves, travel up to the leaves due to adhesion. Acids are substances that provide hydrogen ions and lower pH, whereas bases provide hydroxide ion and raise pH. The stronger the acid, the more readily it donates hydrogen ion. pH 7 is neutral as the number decreases to 1, the concentration of hydrogen ion increases 
and hence a lower number on the pH scale represents the substance to be more acidic. Seven to, be, to above is the opposite. The higher pH, more basic a substance will be. Hence, pH 13 is a stronger than base than pH. So, how is it that we can ingest or inhale acidic or basic substances and not die? Buffers are the key. Buffers readily absorb hydrogen ions or hydroxide ion, keeping the pH of the body carefully maintained. Buffer systems involves carbonic acid and bicarbonate anion. If too much hydrogen ion enters the body, bicarbonate will combine with the hydrogen ion to create carbonic acid and limit the decrease in pH. Likewise, if too much OH negative ion or hydroxide ion is introduced into the system, carbonic acid will rapidly dissociate into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions combine with the hydroxide ions, limiting the increase in pH. It will prevent acidosis and alkalosis. So this is the end of the first section of chemistry. We'll start our second section shortly.